Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Yeah. This is Pastor Van Der Zarthel. And Weathersby. I'm Pastor Sherry Weathersby. And this is Just Just the Truth. Anyhow, with the Weathersby's of Sounding Alarm Ministries, brought to you by Heart Ministry Network TV. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're back again, uh, as God. promised, from last week to this week. Amen. You're probably sitting there saying, that's the same thing you had on last week. Yeah, it is. <laughs> We just decided to keep it on. Is that all right? Praise God. Okay, praise the Lord. Let's get started. <laughs> Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just want to thank you and, and give you glory. We praise you, O oh God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Wonderful Savior. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Father, you are our everything. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being a healer and a keeper, a deliverer. Oh, God, thank you, Father, for sending your word to heal and deliver us from all destruction. Thank you right now, God, for Heart Ministry Network TV. Pastors Ken and Brenda Divers are the CEOs, and God, we pray that you will continue to bless the work of their hands. Oh, God, thank you right now, God, that we're here at your feet, Father, to be blessed. Save us, God, from ourself, Satan, and sin as we yield over to your word that's coming to us. Give us an ear to hear what you're saying, oh, God. Illuminate our minds, eyes, oh, God, that we may behold you in the scriptures. Hallelujah, the very presence of you in our life, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you right now, God, for counting us worthy. We thank you for another opportunity to be blessed, oh God, and not just to be blessed, to be healed, and not only to be healed, but to be delivered. Hallelujah. Daily, God, as we walk with you, Father, until you come back. Father, we bless your name, oh God. Now let the words of our mouth, meditation in our heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. And our souls say, Amen. 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 We're coming out of the Amplified Bible, the Zondervan edition. Amen. Uh, the fifth chapter of John. And we're going to start <clears throat> at the eighth verse. Amen. We're going to start at the seventh verse, to the seventeenth verse. Amen. The invalid answered, Sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am coming to get into it myself, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Pick, get up, pick up your pallet and walk. Immediately, the man was healed and recovered his strength and picked up his pallet and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews kept saying to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath and you are not permitted to pick up your pallet because it is unlawful. He answered them, the man who healed me gave me back my strength was the one who said to me, pick up your pallet and walk. They asked him, who is the man who told you, pick up your pallet and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had slipped away unnoticed since there was a crowd in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. For this reason, the Jews began to persecute Jesus continually because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. 17 verse in conclusion, But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now. He has never ceased working, and I too am working. Amen. We have read, praise God, from the 7th verse to the 17th verses of John the 5th chapter in our hearing. Amen. And may God continue to bless his already blessed word. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the reading of the scripture. For truly God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We're continuing on with the subject in the series, uh, Your Healing is in Your Deliverance. Your healing is in your deliverance. Amen, amen, amen. Now, this is a particular subject that warrants some in-depth uh, conversation on, and, mm -hmm. and we've been using a lot of scriptures to bring out some points that God wants us to understand mm -hmm. so we can get to that place of being able to realize where our healing is coming from. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, some of us, you know how it is in the body of Christ and in, in, in believers. Mm -hmm. um, we like to see it, feel it, touch it. So we want to have somebody to lay some hands on us. Mm -hmm. That ain't that ain't your deliverance, mm -hmm. and that's not really true healing. Mm -hmm. if, if you if you you know if you remember in the Bible on several occasions, Jesus ain't lay hands on nobody. Mm -hmm. He ain't lay hands on nobody. As we go on in this here particular uh, chapter of John, the fifth chapter, we're gonna see something um, that that we're gonna be able to. Uh, associate with what I just said, mm -hmm. you know, because it don't make no sense for me to say something. We can't back it up with the word. Mm -hmm. And we, we absolutely going to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. He didn't really have to lay hands on nobody. Matter of fact, there was a centurion ruler mm -hmm. who had mm -hmm. a servant mm -hmm. uh, of his that was ill. Mm -hmm. And he sent some of his other servants to go and speak to Jesus and ask Jesus to come mm -hmm. um, to heal this man. Mm -hmm. But then as they went and he was coming, he told, he sent word and says, well, you don't have to come. That's right. Because uh, first off, uh, I, I'm not worthy, but I believe that if you just speak the word, mm -hmm. my servant will be healed. Matthew 8th chapter. Matthew mm -hmm. the 8th chapter. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. you, you, you got it? Yes. Okay. Matthew 8th chapter. And, but this, um, okay, let's start the first verse. When Jesus came down. The mountain, large crowds followed him, and a leper came up to him and bowed down before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you are able to make me clean. Well, Jesus reached out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, his le leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one about this, but go show yourself to the priest for inspection and present the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony evidence to them of your healing. And Capernaum. Capernaum. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen. A centurion came to him begging him for help and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed with intense and terrible tormenting pain. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied to him, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then go on. What do you For say? I am also a man subject to authority of a higher rank with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who were following him, I tell you truthfully, I have not found such great faith as this with anyone in Israel. And then that 13 verse says this, Then Jesus said to the centurion, mm -hmm. Go. It will be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was restored to health at that very hour. That's right. So here's the key right there. Mm -hmm. Your deliverance is, is tied to your belief. That's right, what you believe. And when you believe, the Bible says, mm -hmm. all things are possible to them that believe. Yes. So if you believe in healing mm -hmm. and you believe in, 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 in Jesus Christ, then you can be healed. Yes. And that's Amen. what happened. Amen. That, that's, that's, that, oh my God, that's good Praise right there. God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Your deliverance is, your healing is in your deliverance. That's right. Amen. John, the fifth chapter, the 17th, 7th verse. Mm -hmm. And we were there last week, but we're going to yes. pick it up again to go to the eighth verse. But the yes. invalid answers, Sir, I have no one mm -hmm. to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm coming to get into it, my, get into it myself, someone else steps down ahead of me. Huh. Now, you know what? Here's something else by way of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. The man was brought to this place called Bethesda, which was uh, 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 this place where this pool was, uh -huh. um, uh, where you could get healed every, every year. At a certain time, the angel of the Lord came down and stirred up the waters. Uh -huh. So the man was brought there, and nobody put him in, but he even tried to get in there himself. But here's the thing. He says, while I'm coming to get into it myself, someone else steps down ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I want you to understand, and, 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 and I want you to pay close attention to this. Mm -hmm. If you are looking for your deliverance, mm -hmm. you ought not let anything or anybody stop you from being delivered. Amen. You ought not allow that to happen. You Amen. have to be fully committed 
to your deliverance. Amen. So therefore, there will not be anything that will uh, uh, stop you from attaining right. that what you seek after. That's right. Because if you really, truthfully, really, truly, and honestly seek after it, you will receive it. The Bible says, "Seek and you shall find." Fine. That's right. That's right. But you got That's to seek right. after it see with it. your whole heart. Yes, not Amen. half a heart. That's right. Not That's half right. a heart. Why is that so important? Because he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek after him. Amen. And we have to seek after him through our deliverance so that we can be healed. That's right. And he's seeking after a heart. He is. Praise God. Not a person, but a heart that he can show himself strong in. And what kind of heart is that? I'm glad you said that. Let's mm -hmm. go to uh, Psalm, Psalm 51. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Psalm 51. Because you know why he's seeking after a heart? First off, go to Jeremiah 17, 9. All right. Yeah, go to Jeremiah 17, 9. And this is why he's seeking after a heart. Are you there yet? Almost. Oh, okay, I'm almost there too. And it says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Uh-huh. And is extremely sick. Who can understand it fully and know its secret motives? Ten verse, I, the Lord, search and examine the mind. I test the heart to give each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. So God is looking for a, a heart. Mm -hmm. But he also knows that the heart of man is deceitful and wicked. Okay. So then what do we have to do? Well, Psalm 5110. Mm -hmm. Create in me a clean heart, mm -hmm. O God, and renew a right and steadfast spirit within me. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is what we have to be willing to do is to seek God for our, our deliverance. Yes. Let him know that, you know, God, I need a new heart. Mm -hmm. I need I need mm -hmm. to be delivered mm -hmm. from this old heart that I had. Mm -hmm. So I need a clean, creating me a clean heart. And 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 our and and and, and God, my, oh my God, yeah, that's just our acknowledgement of our of our predicament, our that's of our right. estate, if mm -hmm. we will. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, remember what uh, the Apostle Paul said in Romans the seventh chapter. He said, "Oh wretched man that I am." Yes. Matter of fact, in Isaiah the sixth chapter, he even made mention of the fact that he was a man. He was an un, man unclean. With yeah, let's go to uh, uh, Isaiah sixth chapter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Isaiah six mm -hmm. and. Where are we? Are this verse number three or two? Mm -hmm. I think it's something like that. Mm -hmm. Isaiah six, ruined and I am ruined. and this is what it says. Fifth chapter, fifth verse. Uh huh. Is that the, is that it? The fifth verse. Then he said, "Woe is me." Yeah, here we go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Fifth verse. Then I said, mm -hmm. "Woe is me, mm -hmm. for I am ruined, mm -hmm. because I'm a man of ceremonially unclean lips." And I live among people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. That's where Isaiah's deliverance came from. Mm -hmm. And then watch where the healing comes from. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongues. He touched my mouth with it and said, listen, carefully, this has touched your lips, your wickedness, your sin, your injustice, your wrongdoing is taken away. Oh, and that's what deliverance is. Too. That's right. And your sin atoned for and forgiven. Mm -hmm. So his deliverance came from his declaration when he de declared about his condition, mm -hmm. his estate of who he was. Mm -hmm. And then his healing came forth when he got, when, when well, what can wash away your sin? Nothing that's but the right. blood of Jesus. That's symbolic right here. Mm-hmm. Let's hear uh, uh, the tongs touching his lips, the hot tongs mm -hmm. from the altar. Mm -hmm. That was symbolic mm -hmm. because it, 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 it caused an effect. Yes. It caused his lips to bleed. Yes. yes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. It caused his lips to bleed. And there's nothing that can wash away your sins but the blood, of, the blood of Jesus. Jesus. But first, before you get to that place of, of getting your sins atoned for, mm -hmm. you got to come to a place of deliverance, delivering yourself from your own self by admitting to the fact that you're messed up. That's right. That's a, this is why the, the Word of God tells us in Proverbs 4.23, we have to watch over our heart with all diligence. Mm -hmm. Why? Because for from it flows the very springs of life. Anything and everything that happened in our life hits what? The center of who we are, mm -hmm. the heart. That's the seat of the emotions. That's right. And now, now, now watch where we had back in Romans, the fifth chapter, eighth mm -hmm. verse. And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your pallet and walk. Now, in that seventh verse, the man had declared 
that um, no one would put him into the pool. And when he tried to get in, people stepped all over him. So uh, he allowed people to stop him from being able to get into the pool. Mm -hmm. And he stopped his own self because of what the people were doing. Mm -hmm. So he was looking. To, so someone else steps down ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your pallet and walk. He might have been looking for Jesus to help him get into the pool. Mm -hmm. But that ain't what Jesus was doing. Mm -hmm. And what is that saying to us? The deliverance, our deliverance is not, our deliverance is in what we do from within ourselves. That's right. Amen. Not what God does, but what we do. That's, That's right. right. That's right. We have to be an uh, equal partner with That's him. That's right. This is where we co-labor. That's right. This is we where we co-labor with the Lord. participate in our own healing and deliverance. That's There's right. There's things we have to do. I, I like the fact that Jesus said to him, first Jesus spoke the word of instruction and we have to be willing to follow instruction. He said, get up, pick up your pallet and walk. And immediately the man was healed first and recovered his strength to be able to pick up his pallet, to pick up the very thing that was causing him the problem. Amen. Because, Amen. because for him to be able to even do that, he had to get delivered. He had to get That's delivered right. from the fact that there was no way for him to do anything. That's right. He couldn't. He needed somebody to help him. Mm -hmm. And then when he tried to get up, people stepped over him. Mm -hmm. He had to get to that place of believing that, you know what, ain't nothing going to stop me from doing what, what this man of God just told me to That's do. That's right. He told me to get up. That's right. Now, I, 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 I'm an invalid. Mm -hmm. So I've been for 38 years. People, I tell you what, we're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. This is, um, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. I tell you, I promise we'll be right back. Amen. <laughs> Good afternoon, good evening. I'm Pastor Vance Arthur L. Weathersby, along with my wife, Pastor Sherry O. Weathersby. We are Sound Alarm Ministries, and we have a program on Wednesdays, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Heart Ministry Network TV. That's just the truth. Anyhow, you ought to be watching that. If you don't, you're in trouble. I'm telling you, we do the thing in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye back just as amen. I promised. Amen. 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 We were talking about what Moses had did in, in Matthew, the 19th chapter. Uh -huh. He commanded that, that well, the people said that Moses commanded that they may have a writ of divorce for, for just about anything. And then Moses had, uh, got, Jesus had to remind him that ain't what the intent of God was. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the Bible says what God has joined together, let yes. not man separate. That's what Jesus ended up saying to them. Amen. So yeah, yeah, the deliverance. We're talking about the deliverance and, and how it's so important that God, that your deliverance uh, is manifested so that you can have your healing. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. So we was in, it was in John, the fifth chapter. And we was at that, what, that, uh, was that the 11th verse? Yes. And, um, and he answered them. Oh, let me go back to verse 12, because that's, that's where we got to Moses. Okay. So the Jews kept saying to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath, and you are not permitted to pick up your pallet because it's unlawful. Amen. Yeah, the reason why we went to Matthew, talking about mm -hmm. Matthew, is because of what, had, what that verse said there. Mm -hmm. That ain't biblical. That's not scriptural from God. That's mm -hmm. because of... Uh, of uh, uh, the laws that were added on yes. by the, uh, the the Sanhedrin, yes, the ruling uh, a religious group. That's right. Amen. That's they right. came up with these man-made laws That's right. that Jesus had a problem with. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because why? Uh, it, it went against and contrary to the will of God because That's the Bible right. tells us in Revelations, you don't add to or take away from That's my word. That's right. God can heal on any time, any place, anywhere. That's right. Any day. That, that's right. He's available. That's right. And he even said the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And he was Lord over it all. That's right. Amen. And and, and we have to understand, too, about uh, what the significance of the Sabbath. The Sabbath mm -hmm. said that we were supposed to rest. Rest. And, and from our labor mm -hmm. and worship God. It didn't say right. God rested. That's right. He neither sleeps nor slumber. That's right. <laughs> he don't need rest. He has all power. Uh -huh. And all power allows him to do, to do what he does on a continual basis. You're going to see that in, in the scripture when we get there. Amen. At uh -huh. some point in time, we're going to get there, I promise. Uh -huh. Amen. So, yeah. Uh, 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 he said, uh, uh, the man who healed me, he answered them, the man who healed me. Did I do that already? Uh -huh. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Verse 12 said, so they asked him, who is the man who told you pick up your pallet and walk? Again, they were not concerned at all that this man was able to to uh, be healed. Mm -hmm. They want to find, well, who told you? Did No, we ain't say nothing to, to you mm -hmm. because we're the important people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, there ain't nobody greater. 
Ain't nobody That's more right. important than Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. The word of God speaks to that. There, there's a name. He's given a name above all other names. That's right. In, in Philippians, right. the second chapter, the, the ninth name verse. Jesus. Mm -hmm. That at the name of Jesus, every knee every shall bow, bow, and every, every tongue, tongue shall confess, confess that Jesus Christ is, is Lord. Amen. And what I love about it is, um, in this particular instance, praise God, it didn't have to be the fact that... Uh, Another God wanted to use another human being. Mm -hmm. There are some things God just want to do himself without using you or I. Amen. And we have to understand that, too, because we can miss out blaming this one or blaming that one, you know, for not doing their part. Mm -hmm. Praise God, because they're just saying, well, even when God do use us, he still get the glory. But praise God, there are just some things that God wants to come and do himself. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because when he when he made that statement. In the seventh verse, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am coming to get in myself, someone else, he didn't even address that. He didn't get into that because that wasn't important. Jesus was on the scene, just like he's on the scene in me and your life. And I said something in the last session when I didn't get to add this part, praise God, to it about when people prophesy to us. Thank God for true prophets and prophetesses that are prophesying the word of God. Amen. Now, they may not tell us everything about ourselves, so that don't mean that we go from them saying, wow, I'm getting ready to get a new car, a new house, or, or God getting ready to open doors in the ministry. That good part ought to automatically take us inwardly and say, God, what am I doing that may hinder this? Because sometimes we try to, we want to make them as an, our excuse. Well, they didn't point this out, so I must be all right. No, not necessarily. God just wanted to bless because he's a blessing God. But for me, when somebody when somebody comes to me and tells me something from the mouth of God, that makes me, you know, go into myself and really say, oh, my God, I really got to get this together. I've got to do some things. I've got to make some changes. And that's what it should do. So, therefore, we don't live with that blame game. Amen. Because again, the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And then all these things will be added unto you. And when you go about seeking God and his righteousness, you're seeking your deliverance. That's right. Amen. Because if you don't go through the process of being delivered, you're not going to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to happen. Yes. And what am I saying again? Again, I told you, Romans, the seventh chapter, and, and, and we talked about this song, um, uh, for Leandra Johnson and, and Donald Lawrence and the Tri-City Singers, deliver me. And the deliverance comes from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Our way of thinking, our way of living, our way of acting, mm -hmm. how we see things. We need to take on a whole different new perspective on yes. things. That's Amen. Right. And the first thing that we need to do, Michael Jackson says, start with that man in the mirror. That's right. See what changes you can make within from you. And I, and I like something that we did um, <coughs> back in one of the other s sessions of ministry with the sixth chapter of um, sixth chapter of Romans, the 13th verse had brought out. We are to make our decisions. First of all, we, we have to go on offering our members of our body. Do not go on, rather. Do not go on offering our members of our body to sin as instruments or tools of wickedness. But offer ourselves to God in a decisive act. We have to make a decisive decision, mm -hmm. a decisive act. And, and every decision we make, every act we decide to do is supposed to correlate with the life that we say with the, those that are alive and raised from the dead. Right. It's supposed to go along with that new life. Praise God. We, we have new life. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have come new. So whatever we're doing, we're supposed to act in accordance with who, what and who we say we are. We are people that have been what? Raised from, we are alive, raised from the dead to a new life. So why would I make a decisive act about my life as someone that's still a sinner? Amen. Again, uh, and I'm just going to read the, the scripture from that Amplified Bible that she just, my wife just spoke of. 2 Corinthians 5, 10, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Mm -hmm. 
Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through that process of, of, first off, to become a new creation in Christ, we have to get delivered. Mm -hmm. We have to get delivered. Delivered from what? Your old self. Mm -hmm. And that's daily. <laughs> daily. That's, that's, walking in. that's a daily, daily process. Daily deliverance. That's Praise right. Praise God. You Along have, with what we have been healed from, but we walking in deliverance every day. That's right. And the, the deliverance is, brings forth change. Yeah. And we know that change is an extremely difficult process for human beings to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. And even willing to accept. Mm -hmm. But that's why God says, I'm going to send you the helper, mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. He is yes. the change agent of God Hallelujah. that when we allow him to, and he works not from without, he works from within. Mm -hmm. But he can't even do what he can do until we allow him to do it. Mm -hmm. And we have to first come to that place of, of wanting to be delivered and, and putting forth the effort to be delivered. That's right. Why? Because you can grieve the Holy Ghost. You can yes. hinder him. Yes, we can. And that's why we want to stress by way of the Holy Spirit. And we, this is good for me. Too. We can't just um, pin getting delivered from going to a church service, and then that. And I'm the no. We walking in deliverance every day. Amen. Every day until Jesus comes to get us by way of the grave or by way of the rapture. Amen. We have to commend our lives over to Him. We have to surrender our all over to Him, mm -hmm. and then that's where our deliverance comes from. Mm -hmm. Once we come to that place. Of, of allowing ourselves mm -hmm. to be surrendered mm -hmm. over to him. The deliverance comes forth, and then the healing will come thereafter. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is a byproduct of the, your healing is a byproduct of your deliverance. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But you got to get delivered first. Well, you won't be healed. Amen. And we'll see that um, as we go on with this. And, and, you know, we might be picking up some other scripture, but here's what it, here's what it says. We're back in John, the 15th chapter, 13th verse, and I think we did that. Um, now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away unnoticed since there was a crowd in that place. So here's a sidebar for you, for some of us. Anytime that you're doing a work for the Lord and you're doing a mighty work, you don't have to get recognized for that. You don't need to be seeking this, uh, uh, the, uh, the applause of men. Mm -hmm. For great is your reward in heaven. That's a deliverance right there. Mm -hmm. Because what is the deliverance from? Pride. Mm -hmm. Pride allows us to seek glory. Vain glory, if you will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying. That was a sidebar. 15 verses. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So what is he saying? With the see, you are well. Was that well, was that well talking about his healing? Yeah, yes it was. But then it also let us know that there was something that did not really happen for that man. Mm -hmm. He didn't get fully delivered. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to remind him, stop, stop sinning, sinning or something worse may happen to you. So that's the part, that's the deliverance part. We have to stop sinning, you know, so as we're walking in our daily life, God can heal us physically because physical healing and spiritual healing is is biblical, mm -hmm. and he can heal and cure me in my body. Nothing wrong with that. I'm healed there. But to continuously walk that out, I have to stop sinning, okay, or something worse may happen to me. It's just like um, that scripture in the Bible where it talked about um, the the, uh, the spirit is casted out. Mm -hmm. Matthew, I believe it's Matthew 7 chapter. I'll, I'll, I'll go there and see if it's right. And, that, and then the house is cleaned and, and refreshed. If we don't keep furnishing our house, maintenance our relationship with Jesus Christ, with the word of God, and doing the things daily that God is requiring us to do and as living holy with him, you know, living holy every day of our life. Amen. If we don't watch it, we'll find ourselves getting dirty right back in that same place. And then seven more spirits come mm -hmm. in with that one. And the house is worse than it was in the beginning. Amen. And just think of it like this. You got a sickness that you've been having for a while and you get healed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, from that sickness. Mm -hmm. But then 
you have a reoccurrence or a relapse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of that very same sickness. Mm -hmm. That's 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 really symbolic of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Because un unless you get fully healed, unless you get fully delivered, then that that sickness that so that so easily besets you is going to come yes. back. Yes. Because you have not set aside every weight, you have not thrown aside, dealt with that thing that so easily entangles mm -hmm. you. Your deliverance detangles you. Right. That's right. It detangles you. That's right. Amen. You know how it is when you have clothes in a dryer <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. and they have a tendency to get tangled up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want that to happen, you have to do something. Mm -hmm. And you ha usually have to put a fabric softener in there, yes. like, like yes. bounce, Yes. <laughs> to detangle. Yeah. Amen. Like but if it. not, you're going to have clothes that are going to be tangled and de in, you know, intertwined and tangled up. That's just like your hair. You got detangling spray. You spray yes. it on and make it straight. Make it smooth. And that's what deliverance is. Deliverance is to rescue us, to escape, to release, to be smooth. Praise God. So, you know, we just thank God. God sometimes I have to give natural Man. analogies to understand it in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And that's that's a good thing, too, because he has to make it relatable. Now, now, now that's good that we said that. Let's go to Matthew, the seventh chapter. I'm trying to find it. That 13th verse. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go here. Great. And, and this explains why some of us don't get fully delivered. Um, I do believe. Enter through the narrow gate. Mm -hmm. For wide is the gate and broad and easy to travel is the path that leads away to destruction and eternal loss. And there are many who enter through it. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why there are so many people entering through it because they haven't got delivered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They haven't got delivered. Mm -hmm. they're, they're on the road. Mm -hmm. You can be on the road, but you can have, oh, my God, a form of godliness, but forever denying the truth mm -hmm. therein. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you want the effectual power and the work of God to operate in your life, then you have to allow it to have its perfect will yes. in your life. Mm -hmm. And that's where your deliverance comes from. Mm -hmm. When we allow God uh, and the perfect work of God, the perfect will of God to operate mm -hmm. in our lives mm -hmm. and allow that effectual working of the Holy Ghost in our lives, mm -hmm. then we will be delivered and healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because God, he can't do, he can do everything but fail. Yeah. He absolutely can do everything but fail. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Amen. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. All Thank right. you, Jesus. John, we back in John, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. 14 verse. Afterward, Jesus found him in the, yeah, no, the 15 verse. The man, the, the man went away and told the Jews, and it was, it was Jesus who made him well. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Now, here's the thing. They asked him who, who, uh, uh, who, yeah, uh, uh, who healed him? Who told mm -hmm. him that, yeah, the, not the man who had been healed did not know. And it was, a, yeah, they, who told you to pick up your pound and walk? Mm -hmm. Who was it that got you healed, that mm -hmm. told you, to, who made you healed? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. The man didn't know nothing because he didn't, that, that's what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. But then he saw Jesus. Jesus spoke to him. <laughs> and the man said, uh, uh, and the man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. i tell you what, we're going to stop right there. <laughs> We're going to pick this up next week. We're going to we're gonna conclude this. We might Amen. be adding on some more scriptures after where we're at right now. Amen. Amen. That's just the truth. Anyhow, Amen. with the Weathers Bees of Sound, the Alarm Ministry brought to you by Heart Ministry Network TV. When it is being and has been done from the heart, you know that it is being and has been Amen. done right. Until we come back at you next week, Pastor Vance is also Weathers And Pastor Sherry Weathersby. We, we do, do the thing. thing. In, In the, the Lord. Lord. God, God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs>